Hey everybody, welcome back to Windy City Astrophotography. In this video, I want to show you an easy way to sort through your subframes, making sure you're just using kind of the cream of the crop in order to get a good and even better final image. Let's check it out. So today we're going to be using subframe selector in PixInsight in order to find those subframes that uh, aren't the ones that would stick out normally, like a little bit of star trailing or uh, perhaps uh, some clouds that came in and uh, uh, washed out the image quite a bit. These are ones that to the naked eye might look fine, but when you're actually able to analyze them and see them uh, graphed out side by side with all the other subframes, you can spot them as outliers, whether uh, maybe the stars are slightly more elliptical, Maybe the, the median in the image is uh, just a little bit higher. The sky wasn't quite as clear at that point. And uh, lots of other errors that can lead to less than optimal subframes and overall a less than optimal final stack for your image. So you can certainly get away without doing this process. You can just go through your subframes, look for anything that uh, is obviously trailing in the stars and some mount errors and things like that, and get a pretty good image. But I found that as I've been getting a little bit more discerning on the quality of my images, it's really worth it to go through this process. It's pretty quick, and it allows you to quickly find those outliers that are going to affect the quality of your final stack. So let's get to it in PixInsight. So I'm going to open up the subframe selector process here. And you can find that in all processes here and under subframe selector. It's also found up here in image inspection. And there it is, subframe selector. So you got three windows here. We're going to first use the one that is uh, shown as subframe selector. You've also got expressions down here and measurements off to the side. So subframe selector, we're going to measure our subframes. And we'll hit add files. Now these are from my imaging run last night on February 7th. I've got a couple hours of clear skies. It wasn't uh, quite as much as I, I hoped. Uh, it was in fact, uh, it was only about 10.30 p.m. when actually a cloud bank moved in and the imaging was done for the night. But here I've got uh, 64 images in here, two minute uh, frames. I have not touched these at all. These are coming straight in. We're gonna select them all and open them. We put them into uh, our routine here of measuring subframes. You've got other options here. You've got output subframes and star detection preview. Uh, we're going to be using measure and output for our purposes here. But first, we measure. Once all the subframes that you want to take a look at are in here, you're ready to go. If you have multiple nights and uh, you want to put those in and kind of compare across multiple nights what is your best uh, set of images and the best set of subframes, you can do that as well. But I've just got, in this case, one night. So I'm going to hit uh, this apply global. Now that does take uh, usually a few seconds uh, to get done. It's going to run through the entire list there and uh, analyze them. But here is our readout. Now what you're looking at here, this graphing, uh, it's not actually showing the actual full width uh, half medium of my stars in these images, because I haven't really identified the system parameters here, putting in my camera gain and the resolution, uh, a site local midnight, all these things. You could definitely do that if you're interested in getting uh, the actual data, the actual measurements, uh, true measurements of what you have. But you can also just kind of skip that step and have relative measurements. So this is showing uh, based on uh, these system parameters that are given, that is sort of a generic default value, uh, what are the relative values of the full width half medium of these various images. So you can see the, uh, the uh, one standard deviation width is this darker uh, part of the graph here, and the two standard deviations is the lighter gray. So generally, I try and keep everything kind of within uh, that, uh, that range there. I don't want anything that is uh, worse than uh, kind of the, the worst parts of that light gray. Uh, part of the chart here. So when you get uh, some of these FWHMs here that are uh, well beyond, you can see clear outliers here. Uh, those are going to be uh, uh, not great to have in our final stack. Now, one thing you can do here is just click all of the, the ones here, and uh, they're going to get little red X's on them. I'm not going to do that here because I want to show you an easier way to do it in the expressions box. Now, what you can do here is enter uh, the the measurement that you're making here, full width half medium, and then which ones you want to approve, what value range 
you would approve of. So in this case, I would say anything, oh, less than about, let's say 2.25 would be fine. Let's see, this one here is, yeah, 2.2574. So that one would be denied, as would this one, and this one in this case. So what we're gonna do is FWHM, and try to make sure we type here, 2.25. Now we're gonna hit this button here. So what that did is it X'd out all of, it basically disapproved of uh, all of the subframes that did not have an FWHM less than 2.25, okay? Now that's not the only parameter that you wanna use. Let's find some other ones. So eccentricity, this is gonna be how elongated your stars are. And uh, this could be caused by mount errors, uh, various gusts of wind, things like that. So we can see a few other outliers here up in the upper end. Uh, I'm gonna be a little bit more selective on this and call it 0 0.7. So in order to add another expression here, we actually need to add a Boolean modifier there and then we will put in eccentricity. And we're gonna approve of anything less than 0 0.7 and we'll hit okay. All right, so it has rejected these two as well. Now, as this is happening in this running list, the ones that are actually rejected are here. And so you can see the full file name of these and you can go in and kind of see what's wrong with them. You could actually compare and say, oh, well, those actually don't look so bad or a few of them definitely will, especially uh, some of these outliers here that are uh, pretty far off of the standard deviation. All right, so eccentricity, uh, FWHM, also, median is a good one. This is actually kind of interesting to look at. Um, so all of these images were taken over the course of a few hours last night. And you can see the median started quite high, eventually averaged quite low. So eventually a nice dark image without too much sky glow. And that's because over the course of that time, the cone nebula is getting higher and higher in the sky. And eventually it was actually uh, the meridian flip happened just before I had to, uh, to shut down for the night. So you can see it was starting to tail off. Uh, if we had been able to image uh, basically uh, for say five hours last night, this would be kind of a U-shaped graph in general where the, you know, the highest median on the two sides where the cone nebula is actually lowest in the sky. So it could be a little bit instructive there and uh, uh, occasionally be able to see where maybe a thin layer of cloud moved through. You'll see a little bump up in the median and things like that. So it can be interesting to look at and you might be able to uh, learn a little bit more about uh, what happened during your imaging run. So in this case, I'm gonna say, hmm, let's see, oops, this median is uh, 18863. Just to show you how it works, you can actually just click on these three up here, I think is all that we've got. Oh, there may be another one right in there. That's why it's often best just to add in the, um, the ranges here. And in fact, I can do that here this one is 18.86. I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to prove anything less than 18.8. So we're going to add in median less than 18.8. And that should, that's actually getting a few others there that I didn't actually recognize as subframes. When you have a really smooth part of the graph, sometimes there are actually subframes in there that you're missing um, just by clicking. And our final one here is it gonna be stars. Okay, so a big one here. I don't know what happened there. Maybe uh, some light uh, shine down into the telescope or gosh, maybe a passing cloud or something. That's a little bit strange that it's so low there. Uh, but we're gonna say anything with, uh, I'm gonna approve of anything with stars greater than 1800. We like stars. so. Go ahead and hit that. Okay, so a few things to look at here. Up on top, we have approved of 49 out of the 64 frames. So we've said no to 15 of them. Okay, so 49, these are two minute exposures. We're still at 98 minutes, so just over an hour and a half. So that uh, is good for now. We're gonna be adding it to uh, other nights as well at some point. Now, we're gonna move from measuring subframes to outputting subframes here. And in order to do that, you have to specify a directory where these are going to go. So this is 
where my lights already live for this particular imaging session. I'm actually going to uh, create a new folder in here called Approved. And I'll select that. And that's what they're going to be written to. So all I have to do now is hit Apply. All right, so that's done. I'm going to go into that folder now and take a look. So what it has done is, in fact, created new images uh, in this approved folder. So the original 64 uh, subframes are still out here in the folder. But then within the approved folder, I've got these 49 that are, uh, that are good to go. Now, you can play around this as, with this as well. You could actually move the ones that you don't approve of. You could say uh, these are the rejected frames and move those ones in. Kind of up to you. Uh, you just have to play around with the parameters uh, for what you're, you're outputting and which ones you're actually uh, selecting as well as approved. So a few different ways you can do it. I just generally move these into approved. And then I would take these frames, and these are the ones that I would put into my stacking. Uh, one thing I didn't cover in this, because I really don't ever do it, is the weighting here within the expressions. There are a bunch of different ways that you can actually assign, manually assign weighting to these, uh, these uh, images based on what these, uh, these parameters are that we've been measuring. So stars, FWHM, median, eccentricity, and things like that. I generally, though, use the weighted batch preprocessing script in PixInsight, and that goes through the frames as well and assigns weights to them uh, that are integrated into the final stack based on those weights. And you can uh, determine if you're stacking a galaxy or a nebula and uh, that'll uh, affect the way those things are weighted. So I hope this was useful to you. Uh, if it was, definitely do give it a like. It's going to help others find it as well. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to Windy City Astrophotography. Thanks very much. We'll see you next time. Clear skies.